you know? So, the fact is, in the climate, I will propose that EVs work better than gas. And as far as geography is concerned, well, that's bogus. The economic reasons, I don't know what those are, because electric cars, as you know, are cheaper currently, currently, to own than gas cars. And that is only going to become more crazy as time goes on. Nobody's going to want to throw their money away in a combustion vehicle if it's way cheaper or half as cheap to own and operate an EV for five years. The social reason, anybody have any guesses to the social reasons why we will not buy electric vehicles in Saskatchewan and can't be forced to do it in 2040 when all the old timers are dead and in the government? Anybody? Because I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Is it? The bubbles and pickup trucks blowing coal? I have no idea. I'm open to suggestions. So I don't want you to go buy an EV. That's not my agenda. My agenda is political. I want you to not be stupid about EVs. <laughs> to not think that they don't work. You don't have to go buy one. If you're going to buy a vehicle, you should consider it. Um, but just don't be stupid about it. Don't think that you can't buy an EV in Saskatchewan because I and several of my friends here tonight will tell you it's of course you can. And of course you would want to. So the make and model selection is exploding. There are dozens and dozens of them. Every major company, even the idiots of Toyota, which drag their feet on this, are finally coming out with these. And there's, it's not just luxury cars, it's, it's all kinds of cars, it's trucks. It's uh, SUVs, everything that people want. Um, yeah, so the environmental policies of governments have got us this far. They've got EVs. There's Elon Musk who has pushed the rest of the companies um, to worry about their bottom lines and start doing EVs too. Tesla's way ahead of everybody else with batteries and efficiency in, uh, in most cases, I think. So the battery price is going to fall. I think in the 2020s, you're going to you're not going to want a combustion vehicle. It's very quickly going to turn. Now, plug-in hybrids, which you might say, hey, plug-in hybrid can go 1,000 kilometers. The version of my car can go 1,000 kilometers. It has 40 kilometers on the plug-in and uh, the rest of the way on gas. You want to go your commute in the city, you have an electric car, you want to go further, you've got a gas car. I test drove the version of my car and wanted to like it, I hated it, I drove it at minus 17, the gas engine kept coming on. If you have an electric car, well, or if you have a hybrid like I do, you want the, the best part of having a hybrid is when the, the electric motor comes on and the gas engine turns off. This is quiet, it's smooth, it's luxurious and the darn gas engine kept coming on to make extra heat. So I didn't care for it, and I thought, well, you're only going to get 20 kilometers or 25 kilometers of range in the wintertime, that's not very much. So I don't think plug-in hybrids are actually good for the winter, because your range is small and what range you have is cut down. So you're always plugging it in. You come home for a minute, you plug it in, you're going, you know, you're not plugging it in every night. Some people plug in their, their EVs once or twice a week if they have longer range. But you'd always be plugging one of these in, and you'd be disappointed. That's what I think. They, they might come up with one that's better. I'm going to test drive the Toyota RAV4, uh, which has a nice range and nice power. It's actually better than the RAV4, and it's not electric. So they have a plug-in hybrid. That's my own opinion. I thought I'd pass that along. But these are the old ones that are currently on the market right now. Uh, you occasionally see commercials for them. These are the brands that are making electric vehicles, everybody. Um, Okay, my, my opinion is that people are very cynical about robo-taxis and autonomous self-driving cars. And the first thing that everyone always says to me is, James, I love driving. And that's not the point. The point is, when I go to Utah or Las Vegas and I drive my car, I don't like driving for 12 hours. Uh, you'd have to be crazy to like that. Uh, I want to look at scenery. And the fact is, there are, if you're cynical about it, and a lot of people are, and I don't blame you, there are actually autonomous vehicles on the road in Phoenix and three other cities being tested. They're not working terribly well. They're kind of bogging down traffic and getting confused and slow. But the technology, the machine learning, the artificial intelligence, those, those immediately senses, is expanding exponentially, or even double exponentially, every couple of years. 
So the next decade, I can't see that not happening, and I, I think it'll be a good thing when I'm old, because uh, I won't have to drive. My mom drove her car into a snowbank, and then another car when she got old, and I don't want to be like that. So I, well, it'll be nice not to have to drive when I'm getting older, then, which is about next week. <laughs> the other thing is that China will be the new Detroit. China, thanks to the wonderful system of communism, has forced everybody to drive EVs. So, um, because they're, they're literally, they don't want political unrest from everybody in the streets ch literally choking. So they're doing tremendously positive things as far as, as making the price of everything come down. And uh, electric buses are also, I don't think in two or three years, um, you won't see another non-electric bus. And the, the lovely thing about electric buses is that they're quiet. So if you're in a canyon of tall glass buildings in a downtown, they're noisy. Or if you're in a school bus and you're waiting outside the school, your noxious fumes, the most noxious fumes from diesel go into the school bus. All those things will be replaced by EVs, and they're already at the point where the cost of ownership is cheaper. It just takes some knowledge on behalf of governments to do that. And I want you all to be smart about that sort of thing. That's kind of the point of my presentation, other than the fact that they asked me to talk about electric cars in winter. So, yeah, it's going to cost 10 to 18 cents per mile for a robo-taxi, and if you for a company that has a whole bunch of robo-taxis, even in the winter in Saskatchewan roads, you're going to want them to be electric, because electric cars will last two and a half times to three times what a combustion vehicle before you have to replace it. So these things are driving 24 hours a day, they're stopping to charge every now and again, and it'll be free, as much as free, because somebody will have a coupon that says, hey, come to the Cornwall Center, here's a coupon code for you, you take a robo taxi eight kilometers for free to the Cornwall Center, so hoping that they'll, you know, it'll cost less than an actual one dollar off coupon in a paper or something like that. So I think that's going to take off. I know it's hard to say, it's hard to bet the farm on it, but the fact that EVs are cheaper when people do have autonomous Ubers and Lyfts, that they will be EV because they're much cheaper. And it's just a matter of making money. You can't compete if you're competitor is doing it for half the price you are. Transportation as a service, think about it, research it, it's the future. So I don't want you to think of it as pragmatic, buy an electric car, drive an electric car, I don't want you to think of it as a sacrifice. It's not a one-to-one -one comparison. EVs are better in every way, including and especially, and I swear to God this is true in winter. Thank you.